world, I am going to bring you along for rebuilding the transom of my boat. So this is going to take a few days. I've already started a little bit. Um, give you a little bit of background before I go into what we've done so far. Let me give you a little bit of background on my boating skills and uh, just my overall mechanical skills. So my boating skills uh, are non-existent. I've never owned a boat. I have on this many times operated a boat. Um, you know, I've driven my buddy's boats out on the lake. I've operated a few trolling motors, but I have never, uh, I have never had my own boat, launched it from a boat ramp, took it all out, brought it back all in one day. Not rocket science, I get it. And we're not building watches here, I get that. But uh, just kind of letting you know where I come from to maybe uh, help inspire somebody else who might want to jump off into a boat project but has no idea what they're doing. I have asked a lot of questions uh, from buddies, from you guys on YouTube. Cityfied Rednecks helped me out quite a bit. Taylor, Pure Living for Outdoors has helped me out quite a bit. You guys leave comments. Uh, in the comment section helping me out quite a bit telling me how I ought to just turn it into a raised flower bed I, I get that too, but uh, I have my boating skills are non-existent my mechanical skills working on motors um, working with marine products working with electronics doing all those things That's also non-existent uh, I don't know anything about marine mechanics. I don't know anything about outboard motors. <laughs> uh, I know some basic wiring stuff, but I don't know anything about electronics and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to deck this boat out with some electronics uh, when the time comes, assuming it floats after this. <laughs> so... What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to bring you up to date and up to speed about what I've done so far, but I'm just going to do one transom video because I'm not a boat fishing channel. I'm a homesteading channel, and uh, so this is going to be kind of a different video. I'm so tired of saying that. I'm just going to stop because we do different crap all the time, so that doesn't apply here. This is a special project that has nothing to do with homesteading. How about that? So I don't want to drag it out over a bunch of videos or any more than I already have. So this is going to take me several days probably to do. Um, so I'm going to film it over several days and, uh, and we'll just see how it goes. And I'll drop one video of it whenever we're all said and done. And so you're going to see me in several different clothing options because that's just, uh, the way it is i'm not gonna yeah anyways so up to date on where we are so far what you guys have seen if you've been watching is i have cut out my transom if you have not seen that to this point let me put a card up somewhere here that you'll see uh so we've cut out our transom it was rotten deteriorated nasty we took it out uh we took out the wood we vacuumed it all out. We cleaned it all up. We took our grinder and we shaved off any bad spots, got it all close to back to as much fiberglass on the inside of the boat as we could. Um, so we got all that done. Uh, we have made our templates for the new transom that you can see right here. Those two pieces together is my new transom however we're not going to be able to go back with a one-piece transom because we have these edges here and that bottom edge there and this top cap wrapping over so i'm going to have to piece this thing in so we're going to do it in uh we're going to we're going to piece this thing in 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 two pieces uh, so we're going to do a splice on one side and then we're going to come over here and we're going to do a splice on the other side for the second layer. The transom is going to be two layers. So the first layer is going to have the splice over here. The second layer is going to have the splice over here. Uh, staying out of the middle for where my motor will eventually mount 
I didn't want there to be a splice right in the middle of that. So we're keeping it as big as we can. I may even actually move the splice all the way over to here on the second layer, giving me as much of one piece of board as I possibly can get. So this is really, really tight in there right now. So by the time I trace this onto my board and I cut it out and then I divide it wherever I decide to divide it at, that will give me uh, that tolerance uh, of the blade will give me enough room that this new transom will comfortably fit in there. We're going back with an epoxy resin uh, and fiberglass setup. Uh, we're going to put our new Kusa board is what we're using on this project. Um, if you haven't seen Kusa board, YouTube it, Google it. It's the new latest and greatest thing for transom rebuilds and even modern day transom builds if they're not just casting and pouring it all at once. Um, I have learned a lot of stuff on this on watching YouTube. I'm basically expert level, I think, when it comes to this now. Kidding. So there's, um, there's one guy that I've been following this. He's doing this exact same setup right now on a boat that is pretty much the same year range. Uh, his name is Pastoral Homestead. There'll be a link in the description and I'll tag him right here, tag his channel right here. He has a, what's gonna be maybe, for sure a five part series, maybe a six part video series on him rebuilding this transom. It is in depth. <coughs> If you want to follow the step-by-step, -step, you know, everything you got to do uh, set up for a transom, go watch his video. Um, I am going to just probably time-lapse most of this. I might break it up and uh, tell you what I just got accomplished. I might break it up every day. Uh, after every day's work on it and just talk to you just briefly about what I did. But Pastoral Homestead did a step-by-step -step option. Um, there's one other channel that I watch that is using Kusa board, that is using fiberglass, and that is using this epoxy resin. I will link that channel as well because I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now. It's been great as well. The difference is, is it's like a great big, you know, ski boat for the ocean liner, that kind of deal. So it's really hard to apply it here. Pastoral homestead stuff applies 100% to right here. I'm not doing everything step by step the way he was doing it. We're doing it a little bit. We'll vary some. It probably only him will be the one noticing. But he's given me some great, uh, great ideas, some great way to do things, a great foundation. Uh, we're just going to do a couple little things different. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go from there. So I have now talked to you for over eight minutes and you have not seen me do anything. You have just had to sit here and brutally listen to me talk. So now I'm going to set the camera down and you can just follow along with me on everything we're doing today. So here we go.
okay, well, sorry. Um, you only got to see a little bit of this. You didn't get to see me dope everything up and all that good stuff. I, um, I underestimated a couple things. The amount of time that was going to go into this, and then I figured I'd be just in and out, but, you know, you got to cut all your blocks. You got to cut some boards to be able to brace. You got so much prep work. It wasn't just cutting this Kusa board for the transom in one S and put it in because I cut the S too close to the side. So, and then I cut it too tight so it wouldn't fit. So I had to make adjustments and then make a third piece, which I hate that I had to do it, but I had to do it. So we'll go back with a second piece. Uh, the, the top piece will be in two pieces and I'll probably put the S somewhere about right here. I really don't want to put it in the middle, but you know, according to those two pieces, that's what makes the most sense, but we'll just see how this hardens up after this sets up. But that's the first piece in, um, the next piece will have a layer of fiberglass and then the new board sitting on top of it. You can see where I got the sander out and I kind of sanded these edges down a little bit. And I did that for my final piece of glass work that's going to go on here uh, to try to transition into this back piece as smoothly as possible. And I'm going to end up having to feather that sanding out even further than what it is. I just wanted to see how it goes. Note to self, do not do anything with fiberglass unless you have uh, full protective gear on. I am itching like mad right now, crazy. Uh, just from that fiberglass falling on my arms and stuff as I was sanding it, bad deal. So whenever I go to do my finish coat on this, I'm gonna have to get like a Tyvek suit or something, I don't know. Um, so all of that was a lot messier than what I thought it was going to be. And it's probably going to be a whole lot more messy moving forward. Um, so it's just one of the videos I saw said, you know, they called it and said it would be messy and get ready. And you just kind of be like, I'll just take my time and it'll be fine. No, it's just dadgum messy putting that epoxy on a vertical surface. There's nothing clean and neat about it. Um, so anyways, just wanted to drop in and tell you how day one went. It's kind of like day 17, but day one of actually rebuilding the transom, uh, day two, we'll see if this thing's ready to, uh, to cure tomorrow. There probably won't be a day two. I'll probably let this cure out, um, through the weekend or not through the weekend through the next couple of days. And I'll probably come back up here on Saturday and apply my next, coat of fiberglass and my next transom board so that's when we'll be back here in a couple of days let that cure but in f in youtube world in video land it'll be right now all right hey we are back for day two of some transom rebuilding um i have already knocked off all of our uh, vices and our bracing and all that kind of stuff and this sucker feels solid. It's not going anywhere. Our epoxy set up. So now I'm getting ready to. Yeah, you, you can, can see. Put a trolling motor on it. <laughs> no, I'll put a 150 horsepower kick your butt motor on it. So um, you can see where we had some epoxy spill right there, and uh, that's because I'm really messy. So I'm going to sand some of that off. I'm gonna prep a piece of fiberglass, uh, get it cut to the right size. We're gonna wet this thing back up. We're gonna stick the fiberglass on, then wet that up. Then we also, while I'm cutting the new piece of fiberglass, we'll cut the new piece of transom. When we cut the new piece of transom, I will then wet the back side of that up. We're gonna do it in two pieces yet. I'm just not sure where my break's gonna be at yet, but. We'll cut all that up, get it all prepped, and then I'll come back to you for uh, to let you see me make another big epoxy mess. And then we gotta brace all that back up again, get it uh, sealed up, ready to go, and let it cure out overnight. 
and maybe come back up here tomorrow afternoon on Saturday. Um, I'm actually up here a day earlier than what I thought I told you I'd be. And on Saturday afternoon, maybe take all that off and start building fiberglass layers. So I got to get to it though. Okay, so I don't have long to talk because this stuff's setting up really fast. But that right there is the first, uh, first piece of fiberglass that I've put in. Um, that's the second round of epoxy I've done. I'm not quite done with this round of epoxy. And I'll show you why. Uh, that was just to kind of, what I did there first was mix some epoxy and uh, put it on the back side of the first piece of transom so that it kind of wetted up a little bit. I'm gonna put you down and talk to you. Hopefully you can still see me all right. Um, and then, sorry. And then, uh, and then what I did was um, I, uh, I put that, I, so I wetted the back of it, got it good, waited till it got a little bit tacky, and then I put that um, with epoxy, and then got, it got good and tacky, and then I put that piece of stranded fiberglass on there. I think that's more of a structural glass. Um, here's a piece of it right here. I think that's more of a structural glass right there versus that, which looks kind of like a checkered board or like carbon fiber, which I think is some more finished glass. Um, I'll be using another piece of this stranded when I go to build everything out and uh, that um, structural, but uh, and then my next layers will all be that uh, finished looking carbon fiber fiberglass, which looks like it's a whole lot easier to deal with. This stranded stuff is a nasty pain in the butt, and I'm trying to hurry right now to get latex gloves on sweaty fingers, and it's just not working out uh, because I need to do real quick a putty round of epoxy to get into my joints before I slide my new fiberglass in. This is my epoxy setup here. It's the West system, um, the 105 and the 205. It comes with these pre-measured uh, pre pump heads that you see me using right now. And uh, that's really, really, really awesome because I don't have to mess with ratios or worry about mixing anything it's doing it all for me right here um so i just you know putting as much into here as i can get and then we'll uh add some filler to thicken it up and once we get it to the consistency we like we'll start with that i don't think that's going to get me far enough so we're going to go some more um once we get it to the consistency we like, which is peanut butter, I'm gonna fill all the cracks and the sides, and then we're gonna shove our, um, then we're gonna shove our new second layer of the transom down onto there. So I'll let you mi watch me mix this up. This stuff right here is what we're using for our filler to kind of get the consistency we want. This stuff is pretty nasty stuff. It's a uh, real fine powdery but uh, it just really thickens this up and is going to help us get it to where we need it to be. So, you one, I'm trying to keep my mouth away and keep from breathing it because it's really, really fine, nasty stuff. And uh, we're going to get to mixing now. Okay, now listen up. <laughs> this is a messy, messy job. So if you're gonna take this on, I recommend preparing for the absolute worst when it comes to a mess. Um, I have certainly made that happen here. Um, so it's just too, you gotta do it too fast. It's too messy. It's too aggravating to try to get everything into uh, on camera, especially when you're doing this solo. So we didn't get a chance to do that, but as you can see, we've got our second board in. Um, I ended up having to three-piece this one too. Unfortunately, I, I hate that. Um, I've got my seams about three or four inches apart, but with this top lip, 
and that bottom lip turning up, I just didn't have any other choice. So we got our three piece transom in there, two layers. We offset the joints as much as we could, but ultimately I didn't want anything, any interruption where the boater mount, boater mount, <laughs> motor mount is going to go. So, uh, so I tried to keep everything out of there. Um, I've got my seams right here. I've got a brace on those. Those are wedged into there at the bottom. Um, and then we've got our center section that's extremely tight. Makes me want to do something like that for over here and over here. But I don't have anything else to strap off to. I'm strapped off to the seat pole up there. So, Well, that's going to end it for this part of it. When we come back, we will unstrap all of this in a day or two. And, uh, and we, will get, we will figure out by then what I'm going to do with this fiberglass. Um, that was such a pain in the rear end. Uh, I'm hoping I can come up with a better way to build it out. I think, I think I would only have to deal with that stranded glass for maybe one more, like over the top of this. And then from there on, I think I can probably build it out with that much easier to work with, uh, carbon fiber stuff looking stuff. So I'll do some research on that and look around. Um, if you go watch Pastoral Homesteads, he's actually putting back in the piece that they cut out, which I'm honestly kind of considering that too. It's already, it's basically a template for me. It's got the holes located. It's already got all that. The problem with that on my boat is, is that there's cracks all in it. Um, but I think his had some cracks in it too. He was just going to put it back in. And then he was going to take it and put another layer or two of glass over the top of that. So I'm really considering doing that here. But um, I just don't know how I want to do this yet. So this video is, series is not going to end until I, I'm hoping to have this done by middle of next week. But I'm, like I said, I'm only going to do one video for you guys talk for too long that's where we're at end of day two you want all the ridiculous details go check out pastoral homestead he'll be in the link in the descri description he'll have a couple of cards throughout here he gives you a real in-depth process i'm not going to do that i'm just going to refer you to him so that's going to be it we'll see you when we come back to undo all this After the second coat of fairing, you can still see some divots and things. We're going to hit it one more time, just spot fill it one more time, and then we're going to call that good and gel coat it tomorrow. Same thing over here, and then we found another couple of spots under the boat, but this is uh, about the transom. So that's after two. We're going to do one more touch up and then gel coat it tomorrow. Okay, so this is the third coat of fairing, and this will be our final coat of fairing. Looks like we finally have the consistency correct, and uh, we're just filling in all the low spots. You can see what's low. The uh, shiny looking stuff is what's low, so we're just going to skim it, pull it across, and hopefully just leave the fairing in the low spots, and uh, walk away from it, and then the next coat will be just a gel coat to finish it up.
Okay, well, let's take a final look at the final, well, I've got one more coat to apply to this transom, but we're gonna call this, we're gonna call this transom video done right here. Uh, let's take a look at, this has been, been gel coated. I think that's about the only thing you didn't see. We did one more skim coat and we gel coated it and um, it, it needs one more coat of gel coat to be perfectly honest. But I think you're gonna get the gist and it's gonna look seamless when it's pretty much done. And um, if I decide to wrap this boat, then uh, all of this will just, doesn't matter. But either way, I'm gonna put a motor on the back of this thing. So ultimately it's gonna hide for the most part, most of this transom repair. But I think it came out great. It's completely rebuilt, rock solid. Let's take a look at that now. So it's still a little tacky. Why? I don't really know it, but it's, uh, it's hardening it up. It's, it's actually hard up here, but it's still tacky. I think just because of the thickness that we applied it down the uh, side there, you can kind of see the streaks now. Maybe you can see that undercoat fairing kind of coming through a little bit. So it might need one more coat um, of this gel coat material after it's done, but that is a repaired transom. So all in all, this uh, transom project took me the course of about a month, maybe a little bit more from the time that I actually cut the material out. The girls are playing pumpkins, come get it. Okay. And from the time that I cut the, the transom out to the time that, um, that right now, right now. So if you wanna take this on, if you have a dedicated probably week to do it yourself, it would probably, the process would probably take about that long to do it yourself. Uh, we built it up with a ton of layers of fiberglass. I'm not worried about the structural um, rigidity or, or structural integrity or structural soundness of this transom repair. I think it's going to be just fine, um, especially for the size of motor that I'm going to put on it. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm really happy with it. Um, uh, if you remember, we basically, just to recap, we cut out the bad transom, all the plywood was rotted, we took that out. Um, we left about an inch and a half to two inches all the way around the sides and up that side. We three-pieced in our new transom CUSA board material. After that, we um, started layering our fiberglass. We had a ton of layers of fiberglass to get back out to the to the size of the inch and a half. Uh, it's actually dry out here on the edge. To get back out to the inch and a half uh, portion there. And, um, and yeah, so it's all done. We wrapped the fiberglass underneath here. As you can see, we wrapped it up underneath to give it even a little bit of uh, more structural integrity. So, this is this probably took us about a month it's a long process i'm going to tell you right now there is a guy who there's a couple of guys who i pretty much watched step by step i will link them below but the biggest person uh the biggest helpful the biggest helpful the most helpful video series that's out there. He just dropped his last video yesterday. It's a six part series. I didn't want to get into that. His name is Pastoral Homestead. Well, his channel name is Pastoral Homestead. Great guy, uh, very in depth in how he did this. I basically did, followed his steps, but um, did kind of how we put the fiberglass back. We did a little bit different path, but ultimately same result. Um, great video series. I'll put a card up if I haven't already and go click on that if you're interested in this at all. And it's a six part series, uh, all the way from cutting it out to the final gel coat, just like this situation here. So anyways, that's it for this transom repair. Uh, it's taken a lot of my time <laughs> over the last month. That's probably why you haven't seen a lot of the videos. I ended up having a slow week, um, some things fell through with some work projects and things like that. So I ended up having the guys come out and do some work on it and help me get this thing done this week. And we did just that. We got one more coat of gel coat. So that's it. Transom repair done. 
Moving on to the next thing with the boat. This boat's going to be awesome when we're done. In my mind, you you won't it won't it will not be awesome in your mind. I can promise you that. So, until next time, we'll see you up on the ridge.